<laughs> so this toy is labeled Louie, which I think is probably a misspelling of Louise, which is the specific name of Apatosaurus. If this is supposed to be a baby Apatosaurus, which is what we call a sauropodlet, it is a heavily inaccurate one. The overall impression I get from the animal is one that would be utterly dependent on its parents to stay alive, like even more so than most mammals, which, as we'll see, is pretty much the exact opposite of the strategy that sauropods would have been using. Yeah, you. Apatosaurus Louise reached about 25 tons by the age of 15, but most of that came with a growth spurt around age 5, during which they would put on about 5 tons a year. Now, at 6 months, he should still be at about 70 kilos, whereas this guy is not even close. As far as anatomy goes, the forelimbs are significantly shorter than the hind limbs, which is good. Uh, that difference would be even more pronounced in juveniles than it was in adults. That said... Hold on, Holmes. Hi. That said, the manus has the accurate number of fingers, but they are not arranged in a sauropod manner. They look like a lizard hand. Apatosaurus would have had all of its fingers arranged in a sort of hoof-like... Yes, it's a pointer. <laughs> arranged in a sort of hoof-like tube with no nails on the end of it, except for the thumb which in our specimen here is way too small and has far too small of a claw on it. So, as you can see, this specimen appears to be able to grasp with its hands, which is very much not within the purview of a sauropodlet. They would be mostly interacting with the world through their mouth, which, to be fair, this specimen also seems to have down. As far as the feet go... Hi. Oh. You have no preservation instinct at all. Not even a little. You keep trying to die. I'm going to feel real bad if you fall off the table. What's that? Is that the same one? Is that the same genus? As far as the feet go, we have plantigrade feet, which is good, and they've even shown the fleshy pad on the bottom to support the weight of the animal. Though they have five toes here, where Apatosaurus would have four. And the claws are, again, far too small. They would be much longer curved claws. Hmm. Are, are, are you being an opportunistic carnivore? As far as we know, they were obligate herbivores as young. Their dentition was not suited to anything other than stripping plants. The pectoral girdle, that is, the shoulders and all of the other stuff that attaches them to the ribcage, uh, are sprawled outwards so far that I don't know that the forelimbs would even be able to support the torso. And it's difficult to tell because the shoulders are so broad, but it seems that the neck is too narrow. Now, obviously the neck is too short, even though proportionally sauropodlets would have short necks. 
basically everything about the head is wrong. The manufacturer seems to have prioritized making something that would be perceived as cute by their customers, as opposed to making something that reflects the anatomy of the animal. Though I am glad that they managed to add a bit of flesh to move the air passage forward towards the mouth from the bony naris. I suppose the tail must have broken off or something, but a sauropodlet without a tail, assuming it survived the wound somehow, would have had no way to defend itself in its environment without its whip-like attack, and it probably would have fallen prey to something before long. As far as integument goes, the color scheme of pink, gray, and turquoise is not the one I would pick, but I suppose it's not completely unreasonable. The quills on top of the head have no evidence in the fossil record, but you do see diplodocids restored with uh, soft tissue quills, or at least soft tissue spikes running down their backs pretty frequently, so I'll say that's okay. The addition of dino fuzz is an, <laughs> is an interesting one. Uh, until we have better information about the basal relationships within the dinosauria, we can't say whether dinofuzz would be plesiomorphic to Ornithodira or whether it would be plesiomorphic to the dinosauria as a whole. But I will say that it might serve a functional purpose for a small sauropodlet moving around in the forest floor, especially if it also has stiffer quills. Uh, it can aggregate leaves and twigs and other camouflage type plant material to help it blend into the forest. And every little thing that's sticking out of its body is going to help that stuff stick to it. And why would it need camouflage, you ask? Well, like I said, sauropods were not nurturing parents. They were what are called R strategists. They had as many eggs as possible and just figured that by sheer numbers, a few would reach adulthood and reproduce. Whereas without its parents in the Morrison ecosystem, this animal would be eaten immediately. Who's Ornithalestes food? Are you Ornithalestes food? Yeah. You know, to have the, the tubercles showing other dinosaurs is not terribly reasonable, but even if you're going to go that route, shouldn't you actually have Morrison animals on there? Like, the only animal on here that a Patasaurus would recognize would be Stegosaurus, whereas Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops were late Cretaceous. And they're not even accurate within that, like, uh, Triceratops isn't bad, but Tyrannosaurus and Stegosaurus are postured and proportioned really inaccurately on here. Well, ow. <laughs> if you had a whip tail, I would be dead. I want to thank you all for watching Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and go to thegeekgroup.org to find out more about our National Science Institute. I will see you next time. <laughs>